my parents were uh, Junior Daryl Whitehead and Mary Anna uh, Murray. My dad was from Lava Hot Springs, Idaho, and my mom was from Wellsville, Utah. But they had five kids and I was number four. More than anything, I would say they taught me about honesty, good values, um, how to be hardworking, and uh, just open to different things. They wanted me to try out lots of different things. I tried playing an instrument, a guitar, just didn't quite have that ability, but they, then, then sports got me hooked. I loved all kinds of sports growing up. Ninth grade, I discovered my most enjoyable sport, and that was tennis. Uh, as far as spiritual knowledge, I kind of learned that from going to church. My parents were semi-active, I guess, but they always made sure I attend, our, our siblings all attended uh, church because we never read the scriptures in our home or anything like that. We hardly ever prayed. So, but I think that changed over the years as they saw the kids growing up and wanting to do these things. So we kind of encouraged them to get more active, which they did. Sherry and I had our first child, first son, two years after we married. And so that was an amazing experience. And, and it was actually uh, automatic that, I mean, it was like, automatically all of a sudden you're responsible and you need to be responsible. I would have to say that actually my professional life started when I was really young. I mean I loved to tinker. I loved to always taking things apart, figuring out how they worked. So you know I was very curious and I started building things on my own, uh, designing circuits and in high school. I already knew what I was going to do. I was going to become an electrical engineer. I went to Utah State University to study electrical engineering. My first job out of college was I went to Utah Power and Light. Got tired of that after, five, after six months and I went and worked for Morton Thiokol, which I think you know where that place is out in the middle of nowhere. And I worked there for five months. An opening came up at Jetway Systems in Ogden so I took that job, that position. So within my first year of out of college, I had three different jobs. First of all, they hired me to pioneer, design and pioneer the first 400 hertz frequency power converter, which is what powers the aircraft when it's at the gate. So that was a fun project and we, man, we, we immediately took over the market on that because it used to be a generator genset and this was a solid state that fit underneath the bridge and it just revolutionized the industry for power converters. I proposed what, what turned out to be called the, the smart bridge, Jetway smart bridge. It was a paradigm shift to how bridges were controlling to dock to the aircraft. We, we did, anyway, it's just, we did lots of things and a lot of that hadn't been invented yet. So like touch screens, we had developed our own touchscreen. We developed our own messaging system. We put camera video on a monitor, which hadn't been done, so we had to design that. Um, anyway, it was just fun designing all these projects, but the next step was we went to what was called prepositioning. So we treated the bridge like a numerical controlled machine. And, the, and you'd program different kind of aircraft per gate then the operator just had to select the aircraft and push one button and the bridge would automatically come from its parking position, go up in the right height, the right rotation, and waiting for the aircraft. So when the aircraft pulled in, we were docked within one minute, which, which really the airlines loved. So I worked there for 16 years, then 9-11 hit, all of a sudden everybody canceled orders. And overnight, Jetway made a decision to eliminate my whole department, which crazy, you know, I, how can a company survive when you eliminate all of R&D? We also had an opening here at American Pacific. So we prayed about it and we decided, Sherry and I decided that uh, Cedar City is the place we need to be. It was a great career move. 
one of the blessings, if you will. So it gave me the opportunity to travel the world, really. I saw most of Asia, you know, including Indonesia, Vietnam, Malaysia, saw a lot of Europe, Denmark, and I can't remember all the countries, but also in South America, uh, Brazil, Venezuela. Anyway, so that, that gave me the opportunity to really maybe ex expand or help people know the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because I, you know, I worked with all different kind of cultures. And most of them, when they found out I was a member of the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints, or they would always say Mormon, they wanted to know more. So I always traveled with Articles of Faith and Book of Mormon and things like that, because I was, I was amazed so many people wanted to know. And I retired in, uh, I retired at the end of January on 2022, exactly to the day, 20 years of service at American Pacific. Faith journey, I would say, started in primary. Of course, young men was probably the most pivotal time. Uh, I had great friends. We all stayed active and helped each other and, you know, stay out of trouble. But the young men leaders would take a trip every three years, super activity, they called it, and we'd, we'd travel all the way back by car to Nauvoo, stop at all the church sites, came home with a very, very strong testimony of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Went on my mission, which again had extremely wonderful spiritual experiences there. But this one time, we had a, a man that kept walking by outside the gate. And he says, what is this place? We told him, it's the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And uh, he says, I saw this in my dream last night. So we found out uh, his name, he's actually uh, from Germany. His name is Robert, Robert Mueller. So we met with him and he just, he just, uh, just loved the gospel. Found out that he had ran away from home when he was really young, like 12 or 13. Got heavily involved in drugs. Got put in prison for about 10 years. When we taught him the uh, word of wisdom, uh, that's where he had a problem. But it didn't matter. He went in his kitchen, grabbed a knife, and we thought we were in trouble, you know. And that's the first time we'd actually found out that he was growing marijuana. He went there and he just cut down all his plants, and gave them to us, said, take care of them. Well, we said, we can't. We don't want to be carrying around marijuana plants. So, so he says, you're going to have to destroy them yourself. So he was getting ready, wanted to get baptized, and we asked him about his father because he hadn't seen his father for 20 years, I guess. And so he, he says, I, have, I don't know where he is. I have no way of contacting him. And I said, well, let us do some digging and research. We actually found out that he was on the church records, that he had joined the church too after Robert had left. And he was a branch president in, a, in Concepcion, which is I don't know, a couple hundred miles away. <laughs> And he says, what? You found my son? Yeah, I'll be there for the baptism, absolutely. And that was a joyous reunion. Well, I wish I'd have been uh, taking some church lessons or a college class to learn how to be a better, better spouse and father instead of the way I was brought up learn how to better teach and train our kids because it, it went so fast. Before I knew it, they was grown up. Oh boy. As a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, um, active and strong testimony of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a loving spouse and father um, and uh, always wanting to be with you know family as much as possible for work I think I was a top-notch professional in all that all my dealings with people hobbies would be electronics and even 
even all the way, even when I was here at American Pacific, I was still designing and doing things on my own. Before uh, cancer, I loved all kinds of food, really. I, I would say a good steak and a good salmon still wins. A fresh strawberry pie or strawberry shortcake is one of my favorite desserts. Any place home is, or where Sherry and I are with family. Uh, Moses 1, 39. This is my work and my glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. Ye elders of Israel. And then uh, I know that my Redeemer lives. There was just, there, he had a presence. And um, he's always been real self-assured, but add the spirit to that, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, my, Karen actually met him first, and she told me, she said, just wait till you meet the new employee. <laughs> and so she tried to warn me, but yeah, I... It did not take long at all. You know, he gets that self-assured uh, confidence from his mother. But um, inside, he is as gentle as a lamb. Just like his dad was. His dad was the sweetest, kindest, gentlest man I have ever known and Kevin is just like that you ask our kids if they ever remember their dad losing their temper his temper never I mean it takes a lot to get him to uh, the only thing they remember is um, you know they were fighting over the computer and one time he didn't say anything he didn't he just went and unplugged the computer and went and threw it in the garbage outside. <laughs> That's as big of a temper as they had ever seen. So they knew they really had crossed the line. <laughs> I'm getting a man crush just sitting here. <laughs>